All right, so today I thought I would take you to work with me. This isn't something I've done before, but I was like, a lot of you have requested it, so I was like, why not? Let's go for it. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Liz. I am a family nurse practitioner, and I work at a family medicine office that sees patients that are three and up. We do preventative medicine. We do your annual physicals. We do women's health. We do, obviously, pediatrics from three and up. We do acute visits. We do chronic care management, a little bit of case management. There's just a little bit of everything, as you know that goes into primary care. It's a small practice. It's me, one other physician, and two MAs, and then there's a biller. So we're just a tiny little operation, but it's been a super great environment to start my NP career. So I have been a nurse practitioner now for 10 months, which is crazy. Uh, and it's been just a really nice, like gentle ease in um, family practice, small private practices are just very different from big ones. So I'll take you with me on my day today, kind of explain what I just do on the day to day, what I see, what I spend my time doing when I'm not seeing patients, charting, going over that, take you on a tour of my office, all that good stuff. And obviously my day is not gonna be the same as everybody else's out there in the world that works in family practice. And not all family nurse practitioners work in a family practice, but it'll give you an idea of what you might expect to see when you're going into primary care, whether you're an NP student, you're just curious, or this is what you do too and you can kind of compare. So I'll walk you through a little bit of my day. I'll set the stage a little bit here for you. So it is Saturday morning. My schedule, I work very, very part-time. So I work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday afternoons, and then every other Saturday morning. So it is one of those Saturday mornings. I would have loved to have escaped Saturdays in primary care, but as we're trying to expand care to reach a whole bunch of people, obviously people work during the week. So it's very likely that if you work in primary care, you might get a weekend, but they're usually rotating. It's not every single one. And for me, it's only four hours, so it's really not a big deal. But I do work super part-time, so that's another thing that'll look a little bit different in my day. I have a almost two-year-old and then a baby on the way in a few months. So I get to stay home with them a lot, which is really great. But I also get to come here and do what I really love doing with my professional life so kind of the best of both worlds and a little bit of hope out there for you if you're thinking you want to maybe go into this but you only want to work part-time there are part-time jobs out there they're not quite as many but they are there and they are great I know other people that have them as well so hold on to that hope friends all right let's get headed inside so when I'm working the weekend, my day starts at 8 a.m. and here it is currently 7.58 a.m. So I am a whopping two minutes early, which is how I usually roll. I don't show up early and look up my patients. I kind of just go for it, look them up real quick before I walk into the room. I used to try to look some stuff up beforehand if the presenting complaint was not something I was super familiar with, but I've also learned over time that very rarely what the patient says is the presenting complaint is actually the presenting complaint, and I was just wasting a lot of my time, so now I kind of just like to wing it, and I'll go over that a little bit more in a bit. So in terms of what happens when I get to work, obviously walk in, say hey to everybody. I like to see if the MAs have any messages for me. You know, did anybody call? Do I have any updates that patients called and updated me, how they're feeling better or worse? And then I will log onto my computer and kind of just take a quick glance at what my day is going to look like. And this is honestly just kind of a rough estimate because patients will add on throughout the day. You'll have people that are no-shows or cancellations, but it's good to look at it, see kind of what you're heading into and go from there. The next thing I do really briefly is just look at my messages, see if anything looks urgent, look at my telephone encounters from patients who have called in and left messages. Does any of that look like it needs to be addressed right away? I look at labs that I know I need to follow up on. So I'll have sticky notes up on my wall like, hey, check up on so-and-sos and I'll look back at it and see, hey, do I need to call them about this today? Is this something they need to come in for? And I'll quickly review all the labs that came in since I was there the day before and make sure that none of them are urgent where I would have to call the patient back immediately, but that they can wait until their follow-up appointment so that we can discuss it. And then finally, before I hop into looking at my first patient, I will look at the refill requests and just make sure there's nothing that really needs my attention. As you can kind of probably tell, this initial bit before I start looking people up is really just like, do I need to put out any fires? Let me see if anything popped up overnight while I was gone so I can take care of it. And then we'll move on to the more day-to-day -day stuff. 
I would say most days there are at least like five tasks I have to do right away. This morning I needed to call a patient back who had been seen previously in the week and she was now feeling much, much worse with her acute illness. So she was just seeking guidance as to where to go from here. And that is a fairly common occurrence. So here I just call them back, I answer their question, and then always just make sure to document that you talk to them again and you've updated the plan of care, whether you've sent a new prescription or you've just given further recommendation, but just jot down that you touched base with them and what the patient update is. Now, while we're kind of on the topic of returning messages and phone calls, let's just talk about that aspect of my day really quick. So this was something that sort of surprised me. I didn't really realize that this was such a big thing in any office until I worked in one and was doing all my precepting, but there is so much behind the scenes work. It's not just going in and seeing patients. So you're answering messages on the portal where you send a message over through whatever you know online network you're with, with your provider, you have a question about something, you need clarification, you can send it over. We field all of those. We don't have nurses that field our messages or our phone calls. So we have to answer all of those. You can get back to telephone um, messages where they left a message for the MA to talk and then to ask you a question. I res- you get all of those through your telephone encounters. There are the refill requests for all the medications you're filling, which the MAs do help with that in our office, but we still do a lot of them ourselves. And I definitely try to stay up to date and current with my messages because I know it's important when I reach out to my healthcare provider, I want them to respond promptly. So I really try to do that for my patients as well. Okay, so now I've kind of gone through, I've responded to the few things that I felt like I really needed to before I got started with my day. And it's at this point that I'll start to look up my first patient of the day, maybe my second patient. Sometimes I'll batch them in one, two, or three, just kind of so I can flow from room to room and I don't have to come back here, get settled and go back out. So I'll open up their chart. I'll review any lab work that we had from them. I'll review the last time I we saw them and kind of what we talked about, what we were doing, refresh myself of the game plan and look at their vitals from the day and head on in. So obviously for patient privacy reasons, I can't just bring you into a room with me, but we can talk really quick kind of about what goes on. Obviously when you go into a room, a lot of you are probably very familiar with it as you've likely been to a healthcare provider's office once in your life. So appointment times are usually 15 to 30 minutes, which you probably already also know isn't quite enough time to really talk about most of the stuff you need to. I do have a kind of funny, goofy video about why providers' offices get so backed up So when you're done watching this one, I will link it down in the description box and up here at the little eye icon and you can check that one out after. It's kind of goofy, but it does get the point across and explains a lot of what goes on behind the scenes in especially a primary care office. And you're already behind because you went and you saw your patients and things took longer and now you have to chart on top of that, which puts you even more behind. So I do try to come back into my room, little nook after every single patient and chart a little bit. I do chart in the room, but not a whole ton just because I feel like it makes it super impersonal. But in today's age, you can't just not chart in the room at all. You would never get anything done. While I'm doing this, sometimes I do listen to a podcast here. This is the American Family Physician one. I have a whole video on this as well of what podcasts I like listening to that are medical related. And I'll do that sometimes if I'm coming back and just charting or going through the labs like I talked about earlier. Um, That way I'm kind of multitasking and getting some learning done while I'm doing something mindless like filling in a review of systems. And I definitely don't always have time to come back and finish charting on everything and you know close the chart out every time I see a patient. But I do always make sure after every single patient encounter to fill out the treatment plan, write down any pertinent positives I found either in the phys- history or my physical assessment, because those I'm more likely to forget. And I want to remember those. And by filling those in, I can easily go back and fill in the gaps, You know, fully write my history of presenting illness, fill in my review of systems. Those things are way easier to remember. So that would be my tip for you is to always write in your treatment plan after send the medications you're going to send and then do the rest later if you're going to miss some. And not shockingly, this is the exact case that is happening right here. I just saw a patient. I'm not going to be able to finish the whole note, but I jotted down the main points. Moving on to look up the next patient when I realized that, hey, this person based on their labs and just how they're presenting is going to need some 
medication tweaking and further management. So this comes up a lot and it's really good to have all of your references easily available. You can see mine kind of there in the background. And soon I'm gonna make a video talking about all the different types of resources I use at work. But this specifically is my NP binder. I actually have mine down available for download on my website, but it's my personal compilation of all the guidelines for chronic illnesses, acute illnesses that I use all the time in primary care, as well as some of my notes I've just taken and jotted down along the way, my own algorithms. And I reference this all the time. I'm sure you guys have something like this if you are practicing and it's just kind of a good refresher where you can double check because I can't emphasize that enough, especially if you're a new provider, is just double checking to make sure, hey, before we start this medication or talk about going down this new road, let's just make sure that this is the correct path Path, double, double, triple check. And this is just something else I wanted to show you real quick. This is an alphabetized notebook that I would recommend you do no matter what profession you're in, if you're a student, whatever. It is just an alphabetized documentation of questions or topics that I have encountered at work and the quick solution to it, you know? So sore throat, what are we gonna do? It's super modifiable. I show you how to make it in the video. I'll link the video down below so you can check it out, but it's great for anyone, especially if you're in a new job in anything. And now that we've consulted our resources, we can go in and talk to the patient about kind of what we saw and give them our recommendations and talk about our treatment plan. So after I got back from this patient, I actually had a little window of time where I could catch up on all of my charting and due to a cancellation. So I decided to be proactive and try to get some paperwork done. Now paperwork is the <laughs> evil endless beast in any provider's office, I'm sure. You get faxes from previous providers of patients sending new records or specialists sending things over. Insurance companies send you about a million things they want you to sign off on because they think they know how to do your job better than you do. LabCorp will send you things saying, no, we're not going to pay for this. Try again. It is just endless um, home health assessments. You get the point. And you have to sign off, you know, initial check boxes, do everything, sort it into this is junk or I need to file this and actually put it into the patient's file or I need to fax this summer somewhere or mail it somewhere. Um, the paperwork is honestly endless and I won't lie, I don't prioritize it because I prioritize messages, refills, and lab work. But when I do have time, I try to tackle some of the paperwork. That's pretty much the basic breakdown of what I do task-wise throughout the day. I read my messages, do all those refills, I go through paperwork, I see patients, I chart on patients, and then deal with anything else that comes up throughout the day, which is usually a surprise. No day is ever the same, but that's what kind of keeps it interesting. This particular day, I wanna say I saw eight patients, and I usually see anywhere from between six to 10 or 12 on my four hour shifts. So some days are a little bit busier, some days are a little slower, and I know I'm pretty fortunate because a lot of people do just you know 15 minutes back to back to back, and you can get pretty behind on charting and all of that. I do not take charting home with me. That was something that was pretty important to me when I got hired into my role, was that there would be some time built in to get some of all of, get all of this stuff done that we've talked about today done while I was at work and not while I was at home. So that's something to consider is asking for admin time when you're looking for a job yourself so that you're not taking all of this home all day because obviously if you're seeing patients all day, you're not gonna have any time to go like to chart on any of them, let alone go through messages, refills, all that other stuff that we talked about. So just keep that in the back of your mind if you are entering the workforce soon is have some of that time built in because you don't wanna have to take it home. All right, now for a quick office tour before I go home. It's not really an office, it's more like a nook, but it's mine and I love it and I'll take it. I have not really decorated it. Here is a picture of my now almost two-year-old daughter who, when she is a month old. So obviously I am a wonderful mother and stay very up to date on my child's photos, but it reminds me that she exists and you know, that I love her. I really did go in with the best intentions when I got this nook because I was so excited to have my own space, but I just never got around to decorating it. There's my calendar where I sometimes update my life on it. And then this is my resource nook. So it has my binder. It has all the books. Those are also unorganized because they are used literally all the time. So I don't even bother to stack them all cute anymore. I also have a little storage area here for paper that I'm either working on or haven't sorted. And down here I have a bin of all my demo like insulin pens and some snacks because you you can't have an office without some snacks. So there's my office. Like I said, don't judge me. I had good intentions. <laughs> 
And that wraps up our day. So at the end of the day, I try to finish up as many charts as I can. I don't always get to wrap all of them up, but I really do try. I just check my messages one more time, refills, all like I did at the beginning of the day, see if anything has popped up that I need to address, address that real quick and head home. I usually leave like 15-ish minutes late. I feel like that's fairly common and actually not that bad compared to the rest of the industry. Just finishing charting and trying to get everything wrapped up takes forever, but I really do do try to not let it get too much beyond that. Um, if you guys have any secrets or tips for that, please let me know. And one nice thing about my job now is I do not take calls. So when I am done with work, I shut the lights off, leave, and I am done till the next day. And when bam, four hours later, it's done. It was a pretty busy day. Um, so hopefully they give you kind of the gist of what working in primary care as a family nurse practitioner looks like. And that's pretty much what it's going to look like, whether you're a nurse practitioner, a PA, a physician, it's kind of just your day in primary care, a little bit of a rundown for it. And obviously I can't show you all the specific good details because HIPAA and all that good stuff, like take you with me and with the patient, that would be fun, wouldn't it? But you know, HIPAA, <laughs> bummer, what a bust. So today was a good kind of spread. I saw some acute stuff. I saw a couple of people following up with chronic disease management, just a regular wellness visit for their annual physical, a women's health concern, and some mental health stuff. So that's a really good kind of smattering. Oh, and derm. There was a derm thing. So it was like a really good spread of, you see obviously everything in primary care and you kind of field it initially. And then when it becomes a problem that, you know, you've tried one, two, and three things, you send them right over to a specialist. So I like to think of it as like being the hub, you know, and then we send everybody out and then they come back to us and tell us what they learned and what they were told and you're the coordinator that does everything. So that's a really cool aspect. Lots and lots of patient education in primary care, which I absolutely love. Thanks so much for hanging out today and watching this video. If you are new, like I said, I'm Liz. I'm a family nurse practitioner. I do weekly content videos that are usually about nursing or NP things on Tuesdays. And then on Saturdays, I have a vlog where I actually just document my whole life as an FNP in work, out of work, what I see, um, what I do at home, all of that good stuff. So if you're into that, consider subscribing. I would love to have you. And if this video was interesting, interesting for you. I have a few others that I will leave at the end here and link down below. Like some of them I mentioned in the video earlier. I have a whole video about what is a family nurse practitioner in case you're interested about that. And if you have any questions for me, I'd love for you to leave them down in the comment box below. I love chatting with you guys. So make sure to leave them down there and head over to Instagram where I post lots of what I see at work every day. And I always have a tidbit at the end of the day that I learned that day or a fun little fact. So that's a really cool place we can message and chat and connect over there as well. I always have a question of the day and today it's what's your favorite work snack? So I have been eating Belvita, those breakfast chips. I think it's supposed to be a whole meal, but I just eat them as a snack. Not sure if you're supposed to do that, but whatever. <laughs> it tides me over. I got to nibble on one kind of through, I nibble on it like throughout my shift. That way I'm sort of fed and I'm able, my brain still works because I get real hangry real fast. So let me know that down below. Also, if you're an NP or you work in primary care, I'd love to hear your experience going to work. Like what does it look like? What's different from my experience? What's similar? Leave those down below and we can all compare and contrast. I love doing that and seeing you guys input on things. Cause like I said, everyone's life does not look like mine. So leave those down below. I'm excited to hear about it and I will see you next time. Bye.